Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of YTKS. I'm your host Heath and I'm excited to have you with me here today. Before we get into today's episode and talk about tackle, my tackle, what I use, where I use it, why I use it, things like that. Um, and also I'm going to be very interested to hear in the comments what you guys use, what you use for tackle management, what kind of uh, lures and artificial baits um, or live baits that you guys actually use as well. We'll talk about that in the comments. But first, before we get to that part um, of our show, I wanted to talk about last episode real quick. So last episode we talked about, and this is episode two, of our free kayak rental program that Yak Tribe has started, the Yak Tribe Kayak Library. Guys, we launched just a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and just yesterday, and I'll throw some footage up on the screen right now, just yesterday we had our first customer, our first client, our first free kayak rental client. And his name was Eric. He brought his 13 year old daughter on the water and she rented out our 10 foot feel free Mokin and a paddle that was given by Bentley and a life jacket that was also given by Bentley. And guys, thank you so much for investing in what we have going on with white, uh, sorry, YTKS with our Yak Tribe kayak library. Guys, we could use more help, whether it's a uh, kayak or whether it's not a kayak and just things like life jackets. We really need that. Or Adam's putting together some some Plano boxes right now with fishing lures in there. I know Kayak Fishing with Christ is sending over some Zebco um, spinning gear lineups. And I know we have some things possibly coming from ACK and Rex is sending over things that he has laying around. Guys, we need all the help we can get to continue getting people on the water. Our fruits are already showing of our labor, um, of what you guys have invested in, what we've invested in, my wife and, and, and myself, and we are getting people on the water. So Eric, thank you so much for taking advantage of our program. He came to Tampa Bay, Florida. He's in Brandon. He drove, got the kayak, picked it up. We loaded it up and his daughter got to use it over in Fort DeSoto, which was absolutely awesome and amazing. Such a blessing to us as well. And so guys, let's get in to our segment. Today we're going to talk about fishing gear, not really fishing gear, but tackle. That's what, that's what I should have called this. Um, my tackle, Heath's tackle. And so I'm primarily a, a saltwater fisherman. I never really got into freshwater, though one day I promise I will. <clears throat> I think I will. And uh, but today we're going to talk about what's in my tackle boxes. I don't have the fanciest tackle boxes. I have some basic, 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 um, just plain old boxes over here. And I have like the deep storage one. And I also have two of the watertight ones right here. And so today we're going to open these up. But before we open these up, I want to talk about why I've chosen this tackle. And the tackle, this isn't pro staffy stuff. We're not selling anything. Um, I might not even use the names of stuff unless you want me to so you can know what it is. Um, but this is not about sales whatsoever, trust me. Um, I just want to show you guys what I use. We lived on the road for about two and a half, almost three years. And when I first went on the road, I geared up a ton. I mean, I got all the baits, all the tackle you can think of. I was buying local tackle. But here's what I come to realize. Pretty much no matter where you go, from East Coast to West Coast, from Florida to California, the tackle is pretty much the same. I mean, people are using topwaters, jig heads, and then whatever color swim baits they can, you know, what work for that area. Um, but for the most part, no matter where I was fishing, Florida, Texas, Alabama, Louisiana, California, I mean, everyone had their flashy colors, but for the most part, things were fairly neutral, except, you know, in Alabama and in Louisiana, sometimes Texas a little bit, throw in some flashy colors like pinks and chartreuses and different things like that. But for the most part, things just looked like normal tackle I already had before I hit the road. So I had all this extra tackle. So today we're going to look at <clears throat> what I use um, primarily. And this is my Florida setup, but I've also tacked on my Louisiana box right here. And so when I go to Louisiana, all I take is this box, but we'll get to that here in a second. Let's look at what I'm using primarily. If I go to Florida, if I go to Alabama, this is pretty much what I'm taking. If I'm going to Texas, I'm pretty much taking what I have. And I don't know if you're like me, I'm the type of guy that has some stuff in this tackle box that I 
don't use pretty much at all. But you know how it is when you get to a spot and you're just like, man, I wonder if that thing will work or you're just so thankful that you had that one bait that you never used for that one time, one in a million chances of time, you have that bait, boom, it's in that tackle box. I have a few lures like that in here. But let's open up first my, sorry, my hard baits um, and some jig heads and things like that. So we're gonna open up this box right here. Primarily inside this box that I take, I have a bunch of top waters, right? I'm a big, big <clears throat> Spook Junior friend, uh, fan. So the Head and Spook Junior, this is saltwater. Um, this right here. And I really like colors like black and gold. I really like this. This is like a chartreuse black. But I really love bone colors, which I only have one bone color in here. This is like a mirror lure or something like that. Um, my bone top water is actually tied onto my fishing rods right now. But I'm really into things just like whites, um, gold and black with maybe a little bit of orange. Uh, black, I'm really into to black baits down here um, or white. That's pretty much it. Sometimes I throw a pink. But these are pretty much my colors. Oops, sorry, it's a little messed up here. Um... Just basic, basic spook, junior, head in, top water, redfish kill it, snook kill it in the morning, the trout get after it. Let me move over to my trout bait that I really do like. And this is also, sorry, this is, this management is horrible over here. I've always been a fan of these guys right here. These are the Miradines. I have a bunch of these. This is my favorite color of all time. You can see how beat up. It really is. This is the green back. It's like silver with green, a green back on there, a little bit of an orange underneath his uh, his mouth there. Um, and this is what I use a ton. Jack Creval's, they love this thing. They love this bait in Tampa Bay, Florida. And so I use this a ton. I use it for trout. I've got another top water in here. This is uh, overcast top water right here. I use this in Florida, though I primarily use this bait in Louisiana. Sometimes I'll throw it in Florida as well. And so I've got the black and chartreuse uh, top water right there. And so you can kind of see my color schemes I like. Now, let's get into, oh, and this is also a really good bait. Scott Kennedy doesn't want you to know about this because I showed him this bait and he's a lot of success off of it. I'm just kidding. Scott Kennedy and I really love this bait. Um, one day I was like, hey, bro, let me show you my secret bait. And I showed him this bait right here. This is a Yozuri. And it's kind of hard to find sometimes. Oh, look at all these treble hooks. It's kind of hard to find sometimes, but it's got like a dark green with chartreuse and this glows. This glows. So I pack kayak rentals, man. You throw this off the dock, I, you, you will slay the trout. Trust me. This is a good one. I caught a bull red on this one in, um, in Louisiana, but I use this primarily in Florida. All right, now I want to show you guys what I use for dock fishing, okay? I really love dock fishing. I love snook fishing. It's something I I just love doing. I love skipping baits under docks that are super skinny. And this right here is the bait that I use to skip under docks. So this is a DOA. And actually, I think I have, I should have it, yeah. It's the DOAs right here. They are uh, root beer with the chartreuse -y green, you know, kind of tail. And this is just one of those trout eye jig heads. But you can put it on really any jig head. A chartreuse jig head works good. A black or a red one works good. I'm trying to get this one out for you. That works perfectly fine right here. These paired up next to each other. Honestly, the jig head color doesn't really matter to me. But I love, absolutely love skipping this bait under docks. I pull out some decent sized snook, uh, just skipping this underneath the docks. This root beer chartreuse has never really let me down. This is what I always pull out first. If I'm not throwing this, I'm throwing a monster 3X um, shrimp, which I think that's tied on. I only had one left at my house, but I think it's tied onto my, my reel right now. This is my bait. If you are in Florida and you do not, look, these baits are so cheap. You can get like like 14 or 15, I don't know. You use a ton of these baits for like $4. This is $4.99 on this one, but four bucks, go to Walmart or whatever. This is the bait. If you're in Florida and don't have this in your tackle box, put it in your tackle box because this also works in the flats as well. But I love skipping this underneath docks. Okay, we can move over here. I just got a bunch of more mirror deans, uh, different types of things. I wanted to show you this bait. Derek Burgos turned me on to this bait many years ago and by many i just mean like three 
This is by Unfair Lures. I don't even know if they make this bait because I bought so many when I fell in love with them that I haven't even checked back. I just keep changing the hooks on them. But this is like their little puppy dog top water. It's the smallest one. I mean, this thing's like two, two inches, like two and a half inches. And I have landed some monster snook and some decent redfish on this tiny little top water. It makes the tiniest little pop, but just, you know how sometimes you just need the subtlety. You don't need a huge, you know, you don't need this huge rattle going on, but sometimes you just need just that subtle little pop. This is the bait right here. Y'all hit up Derek Burgos, Pure Florida Water, uh, Pure Florida Water Sports. Ask him what bait this is because I don't even know anymore. Unfair lures, love it. And then aside from that, I just keep a bunch of uh, jig heads, just assorted. Look at this terrible management here. Just assorted jig heads right here. And if you see right here, I keep a set of these hooks and a few of these bullet weights right here. These little pinch on things. I keep a set of these in this box at all times because you know what when all else fails when i'm not having a good day you know what i'll do i'll go up to the bridges i will find me some mangrove crabs i will cut off my artificial tie on one of these hooks right here put on a bullet weight and go catch some sheep's head to bring home for lunch or for dinner and so that's what i do basically this is what's inside my hard bait and my my hook tackle box and look i'm getting trouble hooks caught in my my fabric up here so we're going to kind of move this to the side and we're going to open up my saw plastic box right here. <clears throat> and so the first thing you'll find in here, um, this is the fluorocarbon I've been using. I have fallen in love with this stuff. This is by Cast King. This is their 20 pound. So my setup I use on my reels, I use a 10 pound um, braid, sometimes 20, uh, but 10 pound I find I can cast a lot further but I do put on this 20 uh, pound fluorocarbon um, fishing line. It's 100% fluorocarbon by Cast King. And again, this is not pro staffy. This is just what I'm using, okay? Uh, it's the co covert line. And so this has fared up pretty, pretty well. Really good fluorocarbon fishing line. I'm, it's very affordable, um, but it's very uh, high quality. So that's why I like this line a lot. And it cinches down really, really well. Um, I use 20 pound and I go line to line from my braid to my fluorocarbon. And the reason why I use 20 is because the gills on snook, especially when you're underneath docks and things like that, they're very, very sharp. And so I try and up it 10 pounds from 10 to 20, especially when I'm doing dock fishing and those snook get tied around, just some, you know, whatever they're swimming around on there. And sometimes they can break you off just by a slice of the gills when they flare up or something like that. So that's what I like to use. Um, <clears throat> let's look inside this box. So I've got just some loose miscellaneous Monster 3X just in a baggie. <laughs> and so I've got some shrimp in there. I've got some swim baits. I've got a few like fluke looking things in there. So you never know when you need something like that. Again, this is something I use all the time, which lives in this box, those DOAs right there. Root beer, chartreuse, absolutely love it. Um, a few more Monster 3X. I've got a bag of Bugs Jigs unopened all the time. If you guys aren't familiar with Bugs Jigs, it's what I like to use to sight cast. I like to use these more in Louisiana than I do in Florida, um, but I always keep a ton of fresh, brand new ones with me. And you know why? It's because when I'm fishing with Scott Kennedy, Rex Del Rey, you know, these guys, man, sometimes I know they have their own bugs jigs, but they come peddling over to my kayak and they're like, hey, you got, you got a bugs jig, bro? I don't have that blue crab. And what do you know? Of course I do. And so usually they run off with some of my bugs jigs and I got to keep a fresh batch all the time. <laughs> they usually pay me back, guys. Don't worry. Um, <clears throat> I also got Boca Chica's in here. I really love this gold right here. It's from Boca Chica. It's their, I think it's Dorado or something like that, but it's an all gold bait. I absolutely love this in Florida. It shines and shimmers when the sun hits it like crazy. Let me make sure this camera's still, okay, yeah, it's still recording. <clears throat> shimmers and so shines like crazy. Sorry guys for the cough. It's just, it's season over here in Florida. That's for sure. Love this bait. I always keep it with me. I throw it 
often. Let's start to move through these just a little bit more. And guys, let me know what you're using. My brother-in-law turned me on to these and I'm still messing with them, these swim baits right here, but they're like airheads kind of thing. They're, they're hollow body. They're pretty cool. They're by DOA as well. And I got a really big snook hooked up on this um, about a month ago, but I did not land him. And me and my brother-in-law were so depressed because he's like, use this bait, try it, you'll love it. I got hooked up with a monster snook. It popped off and we were depressed for the rest of the day. So that's that. I got a bunch of overcast swim baits in here as well. These work pretty good. More DOAs, same, same body, different color. I like this green and this silver a lot. Uh, other than that, guys, I mean, again, here's a variation of that root beer chartreuse. Do you guys remember who made these baits? Do you guys remember these baits? I forget the name of the guy who made these baits, but they're hand poured. I don't really use them any much, or any much, anymore that much. Man, speak much, talk much. Uh, other than that, in this box, you can tell the stuff's towards the bottom. I really don't use this stuff that much. More Boca Chica. You can tell I really love this bait, see? Boom. Back here again. Here's that airhead or that DOA swim bait I lost that big snook on. So I'm gonna start playing with these a little, you know, a little bit more. So my brother-in-law got me that. Other than that, guys, I mean, everything in here is like back up to my backup. There's nothing in here really good worth showing you guys. And so that just goes to show you guys, I throw pretty much the same stuff. That's what's inside of my bag. I work what I like because I have confidence in it. And I think that's what fishing is really all about. Let me move you over to my Louisiana box that I use. When I go out in Louisiana, I take one box and that's this box. This is all I take. When I launch my kayak, it's one box. So inside this box, of course, I've got top waters in here. Pink works really well. Again, I've got this one. I forget what Zach called this, but, or the, the double dentist or whatever. This top water works really, really well. Um, I do transfer over my Spook Juniors into this box when I do go to Louisiana. So I got some top waters, but here is the gold. Here is the key, the bugs jig for days. This is my number one bait in Louisiana. I love to sight fish. If you guys follow me, you guys know. <clears throat> A lot of the videos I put out, they're sight fishing. I love it, 100%. And Louisiana, where my RV's out there, is where I love to go, pack kayak rentals. I'm there all the time. The sight fishing is unreal. Redfish in four inches of water, back sticking out. You toss one of these in front of their face and it is on, so on. And we'll be back there in April. Uh, myself, Adam, one of his buddies from work, Chris, uh, Mike for his bachelor's party. He's getting married soon to Brittany. Shout out to you guys. Congratulations guys on your engagement. Um, Scott Kenny should be coming through. We're just going to have the boys in town. If you guys are around in April, beginning of April, I'll put those dates out on Instagram if you guys want to uh, come hang out with us. But guys, this is what I throw. If you can't tell already right here, I've got the extra trailers, gold, uh, glow, white, more blue, whatever color this is, reddish. But man, bugs jigs for days baby bugs or whatever you know the bitty bugs what we call them right over here these tiny little bugs these things work great for sheep's head these tiny little baby bugs you can barely see it these work great for sheep's head or when the the redfish are being very finicky um, those work great and then moving on over back to this little baggie I, I keep in my main tackle box i bring this over and i start to transfer in these fresh new bugs into my tackle box. So you can see blue crab is my absolute favorite. I've got a few of those ready to roll, never touched because these I have so much confidence in and that's what I use. So guys, I really don't have that much tackle. <laughs> I mean, I have more hanging up in my garage, but for the most part, this is what I bring. I bring top waters, jig heads, some swim baits, definitely in Florida. Um, but when I move over to the other, you know, a little bit more uh, to the west, when I start to go Louisiana more, I'm bringing this box and I've got my bugs jigs in there and I've got my top waters. And that's pretty much all I use. I don't really use um, uh, subsurface divers. It's just really all about sight fishing. And so I only use bugs jigs for the most part when I'm out there. I, I do use uh, shoo shoo sometimes, those crawls. Those are really, really good. And I use those on a lazy man hook, which I think I have one right here. It's really, uh, 
I really need some some TLC, but there it is right there. That's it, guys. I mean, this is what I carry with me. I'm interested to know what you guys carry with you. Do you guys find that you carry a whole bunch of tackle and use the same stuff over and over? Or do you find that um, you do just take one tackle box or two? Because on my kayak, I just take those two, the the box of soft plastics and my other box with like the jig heads, the top waters and those circle hooks and weights for um, sheep's head fishing. But do you guys find that you carry a ton of tackle that you don't use or are you pretty much minimalist and carry what you know works? Do you deviate from your plan? Do you like to um, take extra stuff just in case to try? Or if a new bait shows up, are you just like, no, I'm here to fish. I'm here to do what I do. I don't need, um, I don't need new baits in my arsenal. This works. I don't need anything else. Are you that type of guy? I'm very interested to know because sometimes I look at my tackle and I'm like, how come I don't use these cool things other people don't use? How come I'm not, what is it? Or I think it's just, I like using the same stuff that I know works and I go and I go and use it. I mean, my colors will, you know, will change here and there and I'll try new colors. And when I find a red and white, and this isn't all my tackle. These, I'm, I'm just showing you guys basic body styles. I'll swap in red and white in Florida. I'll swap in gold and black and whites and half that stuff's tied on right now. I just took straight from my kayak right to here. But do you guys, I just want to know in the comments below, do you guys take a lot and use only a little or do you just take what works and and you use that? And do you add other baits into your lineup to test them out? Because sometimes I will go to Walmart and I'll see a new Spook Junior topwater color on there and I'll snag it, see it works and add it to my lineup. But that's pretty rare. In Florida, I'm mostly using black and golds, bone color, whites, a little bit of pink, um, red and whites, and that's pretty much it on, on um on my jig heads, I'm just using root beer, chartreuse, whites, white shrimps, uh, things like that. And I need to restock my Monster 3X. But once I move into Louisiana, I start using things like black and chartreuse, uh, blue, green, and white. Um, you know, that blue crab color I like so much right here. I use more brighter colors. I use pinks, pinks, things like that. And so let me know in the comments below what you what you like to use. And so I don't want this episode to drag on too long. I've got another one to film. I'm going to Israel next week with my wife. So I have to film in advance, probably tomorrow, episode number four. This is episode three of YTKS. But yeah, um, my wife and I, we're going to Israel, um, the Holy Land with our church. I'm very excited about that. We're going to be gone for 10 days. So I'll still be on Instagram, checking, reposting, sharing, swiping up in and all that kind of stuff. So guys, thank you so much. Please let me know what you guys use in your taco box. I want to engage with you guys. I'm always picking random winners to win random things, decals, whatever the case is. I like to DM y'all and uh, say thank you for engaging with our show and leaving those comments and sharing them and reposting us. And guys, leaving those reviews on Apple Podcasts has helped a tremendous amount. Thank you so much. Also, for everyone that's donated to the Yak Tribe Kayak Library, thank you. Thank you so much. We're being interviewed by the Tampa Bay Times this Tuesday. So tomorrow, this episode drops today. So tomorrow we're going to be interviewed. And I'm just, I'm so blessed and so pumped up to share what we have going on with the world. And this is showing to bear fruits already. And so Texas is coming. My boy Rex, he's going to be setting up a location. He's already told me he's down. And then we're going to Pennsylvania. And soon, guys, we are disrupting the industry to bring uh, bring in and bring back what matters, getting people on the water, sharing our passion. And hey, when they figure out they like kayak fishing, they're going to go find a dealer. They're going to get a kayak of their own and they're going to get plugged in and involved in Yak Tribe and the kayak fishing community and what we have going on. So guys, that wraps up episode number three, I believe. Yes, episode number three of YTKS. Our episodes drop every other Monday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I look forward to seeing you guys in a few weeks.